Hi, I'm Anthony Post. I'm a hepatologist here at Cleveland, Ohio, where I practice hepatology and liver disease. And today I'd like to talk about hepatitis B serologies. As a point of starting, I'd like to present a patient. This is a 55-year-old man who comes in with jaundice for evaluation. He has typical symptoms of hepatitis, nausea, anorexia, and right upper quadrant pain. He has a history of intravenous drug use over the last 10 years. He has a typical rise in his uh, liver tests with an AST and ALT of 1,500, bilirubin of 12, near normal alkaline phosphatase. On exam, he's icteric, he has jaundice, and tender hepatomegaly. The serologies we'll be talking about today are his hepatitis serologies, which these are typical of acute infection with surface antigen positive and a viral DNA level of 1 million copies. So let's go over the hepatitis B virus here. We have a central core of DNA within the virus, and then we have core antigen on the inside of the virus, and then surface antigen covering the virus. Of note, we only see the surface antibody within the serum. We don't see core antigen in the serum ever. We see antibody directed against it, and we'll talk about this in a minute. So what happens with acute hepatitis B infection? About four weeks after we are infected by the virus, we'll start to see a rise in surface antigen. And usually around eight weeks is when jaundice develops, somewhere in this range. So this is generally where the person comes into the doctor to be seen, and they usually are positive for surface antigen. What will happen at the same time is there will be an IgM response, and core antibody will rise along with the surface antigen. And then what you'll see as you get further out into the third or fourth month of, after the infection, you'll see a decline in the surface antigen, and this correlates with the development of surface antibody. And what's happening here is that the surface antigen is going down as surface antibody is binding to it, and it's really destroying the virus here. What you'll see also is the loss of IgM against core antibody and the development of IgG against core antibody here. And this will be around permanently in patients who were exposed to hepatitis B. And what you can see here is after the infection with hepatitis B, the surface antibody will go up and will remain elevated indefinitely, which is a protective against future infections. So this is the standard pattern of infection in acute hepatitis B, loss of surface antigen with the development of surface antibody. In chronic infection, what happens is there's no development of surface antibody, and consequently with that, you have a rise in surface antigen, and the surface antigen never falls. So you just see continued surface antigen, continued production of virus. You'll see the IgM go up like it did in the acute infection and then fall, and along with it, the core antibody will develop and be persistent. The note here is the core antibody is not protective uh, for the virus. So the virus will not disappear even though you make core antibody. It only disappears when you make surface antibody. And here's the situation with somebody who gets vaccination against hepatitis B. Note that all that you have is surface antibody, and that's because the vaccination is just a genetically produced surface antigen without the virus itself. So you'll develop antibodies against the virus, and uh, you won't have any evidence of whole virus in your body, so there'll be no core antibody developed. So this uh, slide shows an overview of hepatitis B serologies, and let's uh, compare and contrast different states. So in the average person who gets acute hepatitis B, they will be surface antigen positive at the time. They'll also have IgM reflecting the acuteness of the infection, and uh, DNA will be positive. What happens to about 95% of adults who get acute hepatitis B is they go on to this stage, recovered hepatitis B, where they lose surface antigen, they gain surface antibody, which it becomes protective for them, and they have a residual marker that they were infected but with the core IgG that will last for the rest of their lives. In the 5% of adults or the majority of babies who might become infected with hepatitis B, they go on to become chronic carriers, so they remain surface antigen positive for the rest of their lives. They're core antibody positive, but they never make surface antibody, and that's why they never clear the virus permanently. They always have DNA. Another phase of chronic hepatitis would be inactive carrier, where they make only a low amount of DNA, 
They also are surface antigen positive, but they don't make core antibody, and that's why they never lose the infection. People who are vaccinated, all they have is surface antibody because that's all they're exposed to. They're not exposed to virus, so they never make core antibody uh, because they've never been exposed to it. And the surface antibody here is protective of infection in the future. And you might be asked about a patient in distinguishing whether someone was vaccinated against hepatitis B or whether they recovered from the infection. It's actually very simple to tell the difference. You look at their core antibody. So both groups will be negative for hepatitis B, surface antigen. They'll be positive for surface antibody. One obtained it through the vaccination, one obtained it from the infection. But the core antibody will be positive in those who've recovered, and the core antibody will be negative in the vaccinated individual.